Why are we all accepting broken solutions? Whether you choose Apple Notes, Bear, Notion, or Craft, there are compromises for each that make finding a great app impossible. I've spent hundreds of hours across these apps trying to find a perfect solution. While I've found peace in my choice, it wasn't because I found the perfect app. It was because I finally understood something crucial about productivity apps. It's really about picking your battles, not finding a perfect solution. What does that even mean? Find an app that you can actually do work in and then use it. Starting with my Notes app experience, here's my checklist of things that I look for in a Notes app. Quick setup is important to me. It has to be easy to get in and get going. No fluff. I love a simple user interface with a Notes app. I also enjoy automated sorting with tags. I hate having to dig through folders and manually sort notes into their respective homes. Readwise integration is a must. I need to be able to access my highlights for writing and video research directly inside of my notes app. The ability to work with a task app is crucial for me. I love being able to link my notes directly to my tasks and that's critical to my workflow. And finally, seamless sync across all of my devices. It's gotta be available on my laptop, my iPad, and my iPhone, so I can access my notes anywhere and input ideas on any device. I've rated the top five notes apps that I've used against these categories to see which one comes out on top. After we go through the pros and cons of all five, I'll give you some more details about my system and how it could really be used with any one of these applications. Starting with Apple Notes. From a setup perspective, it's by far the easiest. If you have an Apple computer or laptop or iPad or iPhone, you don't even have to download it. It's already on your device when you get it. The UI is just okay. It's simple and no frills, but the yellow accents can be off-putting to some people and there's be definitely better designed Notes apps out there. Ultimately, Apple Notes takes a function over form approach, and I'm not mad at it. The tags and smart folders keep my notes in their respective places automatically. Long gone now are the days where I would move notes to their respective folders and then dump them into the archive when I was done with them. Now, smart folders and tags takes care of this for me, as long as you use them properly. Apple Notes also now has Readwise integration. It's still in beta, but it definitely works and it pulls in all of your highlights into Apple Notes. It's really starting to make Apple Notes look like a much better second brain system than it has ever before in the past. Apple Notes links directly to Apple Reminders, which is my tasks app of choice. It's a little more difficult to link to other tasks apps if you wanted to use something like Todoist or Things. Apple Notes does have a deep link system it's hard to get those URLs. You have to have a uh, application called Pro Notes. It's an add-on on the Mac computer to get the URL scheme. So you could link those notes to a task system that isn't built into iOS like Things or Todoist. And of course, Sync here is free. It automatically backs up and syncs with iCloud. So I gave it a really high score, despite now the fact that I'm coming up over 1300 notes in Apple Notes and linking a bunch of notes together, along with tags and smart folders. Occasionally I do get some slowdowns on the sync process, especially if I'm picking up a device I haven't used in a while. Like if my iPad has been sitting for two, three or four days and I've been working on notes on my laptop or on my phone. When you pick that device up and go into Apple Notes, you kind of get the spinny wheel sync, and it can take a little bit before all of those notes sync together. And then lastly, something I use all the time in Apple Notes now is the ability to scan documents. And then when you scan documents, it uses something called OCR, which is optical character recognition, which just means the app is recognizing the text or the images in that file. <clears throat> and is able to pull them into the search query. So whatever you scan in, it could be a PDF, a document, a piece of paper, or something with handwriting on it, that text becomes searchable in Apple Notes. That's really useful if you like writing in a paper journal, which I do occasionally, and then wanna have that stuff in Apple Notes where it is searchable and also backed up. And then lastly, maybe the best part about Apple Notes is its price, which is absolutely free. 
Transitioning now to Bear Notes, what I consider to be kind of a close cousin to Apple Notes. Bear has been around a really long time and is a Markdown Notes app that's closer to the Apple Notes experience than it is to a Markdown text editor. Bear's setup is great. The UI is objectively better than Apple Notes and you get a bunch of different themes if you're on the pro plan that can help make it even better. Its tag and sub tag system replaces folders altogether, which is great. I love that it's on by default. That's a big plus for me over Apple Notes. You don't really have folders, but you have tags and sub tags and nested tags. And it keeps all of your notes in the right spot without having to do anything. A downside with Bear, it doesn't currently have Readwise Sync. However, you could go into Readwise and manually export your highlights in a markdown format and then import them to Bear Notes. But I like that all of this stuff is pretty much automated now in the other applications. So having to remember to do that is just one more thing that I don't want to have to do. Like Apple Notes, Bear also seamlessly links with Apple Reminders. It has a deep link structure that's much easier to get to and actually works with shortcuts as well. So you can pull the URL scheme from a specific note and link it to a reminder automatically if you choose. If you use my preferred method of highlighting the title and right clicking to share to Apple Reminders, you'll even get a little bear icon in Apple Reminders that shows you that that task is linked to a bear note. The biggest downside here for most people is going to be the subscription cost. Now it's not exorbitant, but it is $30 a year. You get iCloud Sync for all of your devices. You get encryption. You have more export options, a bunch of different themes, like I mentioned before, along with different app icons. And then OCR, like I mentioned in Apple Notes, is part of the pro plan with Bear. So something that you get for free in Apple Notes is a paid feature in Bear. This is kind of a bummer. It makes Apple Notes look really good, like a really good deal when you start comparing to these other options. Next up is maybe the internet's favorite second brain app, that's Notion. Notion has created a cult-like following for both businesses and individuals alike, and has created its own ecosystem and its own businesses aside selling Notion templates from various creators because of its difficulty with setup. The first time I opened Notion, I got really overwhelmed. It was very difficult to try to figure out what I wanted to make Notion do and how to actually make it do it. So a lower score on setup for me, and this is probably the hardest app to just jump into and get going. Notion has never really made sense to me, and I don't feel bad for not liking it, but that doesn't mean that I haven't tried and tried and tried again to make Notion work for me. I'm never really sure if it's me working the setup or if the app just doesn't do what I want it to do. But unfortunately, it isn't as polished as I would like it to be. And there are minor nits that leave me looking elsewhere every time I try to set up Notion. The UI isn't really bad. I just find it a little annoying to navigate, especially since I'm not used to the slide overviews and how you click certain things in order to get into documents, but that's subjective. There's plenty of people who have no issues with the UI of Notion and use it every day in their businesses. Doesn't necessarily have tags, but you can set up these database-like systems um, and you can tag things in there. But setting up a smart folder and tagging system like Apple Notes and Bear Notes is beyond my ability in Notion. Notion also supports Readwise. It has great integration. The sync is automatic, just like I would like it. For tasks, this is a little bit unique. Notion kind of becomes the task manager itself. You don't necessarily need a second application with Notion. So it kind of links, I guess, because it's linking with itself. But if you didn't want to manage tasks inside of Notion, it's pretty difficult then to link things together like I like doing with Apple Notes and Reminders. And then I docked at some points on sync because offline support just really isn't good. And there are times when I open it up and it's really slow to load and open in general while it syncs all the files in the background. I tried to make Obsidian work for my second brain for quite a while and it comes really close with just a few exceptions. 
Like Notion, Obsidian can be complex to set up and there really is no limit to what you can do with Obsidian. There's a dedicated developer community that makes plugins for Obsidian. There's a lot of support online in both forums and YouTube. You can do a ton with Obsidian. Now that can be a little overwhelming and you can end up like me and spend more time trying to mess with your system in Obsidian and get it working just right than you do actually getting work done. The UI is pretty good. It's actually self-explanatory. It is easy to jump in and just start making notes. It features tags, but if you wanted it to do, you know, a small smart folder type thing, you need some extra plugins and workarounds to make it do that automatically. Again, something beyond my ability. Obsidian does also have Readwise Sync. It's got an official Readwise plugin that works great. You can set it so it syncs every couple of hours, like six hours, 12 hours, or every time you open the app, something like that. It works great. And at its core, Obsidian is just creating markdown files on your computer's hard drive. So it is easy to go navigate and find the note. It again features a URL scheme that's easy to get to, to copy and paste to other um, task apps if you wanted to do that. Sync is a little bit of a weird issue with Obsidian because by default you can use iCloud Sync. So if you wanted to put your vault, which is what they call the collection of all of your notes, in your iCloud folder, you can. This is what I've done. But the way that iCloud manages files and folders that you haven't used for a while, it tends to offload those things so they're not taking up storage on your device. Right? You're not, you don't have your full iCloud library downloaded to your device. That would defeat the purpose of having the iCloud storage in the first place. Oftentimes you can go into Obsidian, try to open it up and want to do something quickly, but iCloud has offloaded those files, so it needs to go recache like six or 700 notes. And that takes minutes, not seconds. So it's kind of annoying to open up and try to put something in quickly. We talked about OCR with Bear Notes and Apple Notes. Obsidian doesn't do OCR, but generally how it handles attachments is kind of confusing. So they have to be in an attachments folder. This can either be in your main root or in a subfolder. But when you put something in a note, it's not really in a note. It's saving that JPEG or PDF or whatever to its own folder, the attachments folder on your hard drive. So think of it like the note is just pointing to where that PDF is to create the picture of it. It's not like the PDF is actually in the note like it would be in something like Apple Notes. And lastly, Craft. This is the most recent app that I thought could have some legs for me. Craft recently added something like Notion databases. Right now it's more simplified and easier to use, but it also has less features. The setup for Craft is a little bit confusing if you're thinking about notes apps or if you're used to using something like Apple Notes or Bear Notes. Craft is more document focused, so each thing is kind of like a document, but with these new uh, database like things, it gets a little confusing because you can have a bunch of documents inside of one database and then they don't show up on your home page individually like uh, an individual note would. Generally, though, the UI is pretty to look at and you can make amazing looking documents with Craft. The styling is a big benefit. And it kind of has tags in these new database like systems, but not like Apple Notes and Bear Notes would. And it also now has Readwise support. So it's really great to have Readwise starting to pick up all these other Notes apps and support them. The more Notes apps that get added to Readwise, the better in my book. It's good to have competition. Craft does also have a URL scheme. I found it works a little bit weird with Apple Reminders if you copy the URL and link it to a reminder. Sometimes it'll try to open the web interface of Craft rather than opening the app on whatever device you're on. So just a little weird thing, but um, Craft is also implementing tasks itself. It's a pretty simple interface right now. doesn't have a lot of features, pretty bare bones. If they added a Kanban system to the tasks, I think that would really make Craft a strong competitor for me to Apple Notes. And Craft has great offline support and Sync is good as well. Never had a problem where I was working on something on a different device and opened it up on something else in Craft and had to wait. So that's a good thing for Craft. 
Now that I've gone through all of these applications, their pros and cons, how the heck do I even use these things? A notes app is really the central hub for my second brain. It's how I run my business, keep track of my thoughts with a journal. It houses health information, notes from courses or school, and various ideas that pop into my head that I might want to make videos on. From that perspective, I value the ability to get things into a notes app quickly. I constantly use the Apple Quick Note feature or ask the assistant to take a note for me while I'm driving. And that's the best thing about Apple Notes, in my opinion, is how easy it is to get in and get your idea down before it's gone. In my system, I have tags for YouTube, podcast, and newsletter. So as I create something, it gets a tag, it goes into that respective smart folder. As I finish it up and post those things to the world, I give it the hashtag posted. So it clears, comes out of the YouTube channel um, folder, smart folder, and goes down to a posted to YouTube smart folder. That way, keeps myself focused on the things that I'm working on that are active for YouTube. And when I want to go reference what I've done in the past, I have a whole folder full of all the videos that I've posted to YouTube. Each Apple note gets its own to do. If it's for a video, the to do app basically then runs the schedule along with the calendar. So planning things out when I'm going to record videos, rate videos and post them is done in the to do app alongside the calendar. The simple solution I have to create notes based on templates, tag them accordingly, and then link tasks together could be transferred to any number of applications. I just happen to use Apple Notes and Apple Reminders, but I could use Notes and Todoist. I could use Bear and Things 3. I could use Notion or Craft. Each one of these would pretty much do everything that I need, but none of them are perfect solutions. I've kind of honed in over the years on what I like in a Notes app, and that's something really close to the stock Apple Notes app. So feel free to experiment, but don't spend so much time switching apps that you get nothing done. If you like this video, subscribe for more productivity and product reviews. Thanks for watching. Later.